Hey man, so earlier I did like a 20 minute version of what I'm about to do and hopefully less than 10 right now to explain to you where I've been and why I've been gone for as long as I have. Missing in artistry? Anyway, so I was in Birmingham, Alabama uh, participating in the Red Mountain Theater Company Human Rights New Works Festival, the inaugural festival. It was fantastic. It was started by Keith Cromwell, who is, of course, the executive director of Red Mountain Theater Company, um, based on a vision that he had um, for what Birmingham is and what Birmingham can be, which is sort of rooted in the nature of its civil rights history. So if we are uh, considering Dr. King and, and all the work that he's done, he came to Birmingham because he knew that if Birmingham could change, then we could send ripples and change the world, ideally. So Keith said, will we change lives through theater? Let's do a theater, a human rights and new works festival here in Birmingham. So he started one. Um, the festival director was Matt Schicker, really sweet guy. They met 10 years ago. They had this idea. Matt put a beautiful repertoire together. And the artistic advisor was, drumroll, Billy Porter, who... I know you know because we used to weep to his version of Sunday in the Park or Sunday from Sunday in the Park with George. It was awesome to have him there. He's fantastic. So the first night was uh, a play by, well, they, they did a show called Alabama Story. Alabama Story is a play written by Kenneth Jones. And he saw um, an obituary of, an, of a librarian from Alabama who was um, prosecuted for um, her defense of a book uh, about a black rabbit and a white rabbit falling in love um, in the 50s, I believe. And that has obvious human rights implications right there. Um, it was the uh, uh, just the fact that it's from Alabama, that it's about biracial marriage, and it's about people who are prosecuted for defending human rights. Um, they gave that a full production, and they did that Thursday night and su su Sunday matinee. Unfortunately, we were not able to see that show because of rehearsal, and then we left Sunday morning. But I heard great things about it. Henry Scott directed it. A great, good guy, great cast. The next night was a writer's panel, which was fantastic. All the writers got up and got to talk about uh, each of their pieces, and it was followed immediately by The Ballad of Kluke and Vignette, which was a play written by Che Walker, a Londoner who lives down the street, actually, from here in L.A. And it's about these this couple who fell in love um, in very unlikely circumstances, he's much older than she is. She's running away from a past, but she's an aspiring writer. His past that he's running from, in a sense, is his past in the prison uh, incarceration system. And um, it's a very, the, their love is so beautiful and so touching. And Cecil Washington and Kira Wharton, Kira Faith, were um, the stars of the show. And they were pulling melodies out of thin air. It was unbelievable. Um, and then, of course, it, it, it ends tragically, unfortunately, because of a, an event that I won't uh, tell you now, just in case you see it one day. But let's just say the grip of the system um, is tight, and it is hard for some people to get out of it. Um, and it was a really powerful piece, really happy about that one. Saturday was a full day. The first day, the first play was um, Everything That's Beautiful. It, is a, it was a trans, it's, it's about a, a boy, a transgender boy. Who ends up? Uh, who is actually a, a girl, biologically born a boy, but a girl, um, and she's eight years old. Her name is Morgan, and her family moves to um, to uh, New York because they think that that's going to help things for them to get a fresh start. And what they learn is that they are um, having to deal with uh, themselves, which is really what it's all about in the end. Um, and the, just the trials and, and just the the the. Um, the mourning the loss, so to speak, of what they wanted Morgan, who they wanted Morgan to be, and then honoring who Morgan really is. That was written by um, Elizabeth Wilder. Later in the afternoon, we had Mother Emanuel, which was written by uh, Rajinja Ramoon uh, Maharaj, um, Adam Mace, and Christian Lee Branch. Um, they wrote a play about the Charleston shootings. <clears throat> and their idea of the of the play was to first of all never mention the name of the person who committed the, that crime, um, but to honor the nine lives of those people uh, who perished and yet whose family, through an incredible act of faith and 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 devotion, forgave him, and continue to forgive him and honor 
their lives through that forgiveness and their faith through that forgiveness. There's four actors playing nine characters, <clears throat> multiple characters. And it was a, an incredible spiritual artistic gut punch. Um, really an amazing work. Um, what On top of all of that, we actually had survivors of the victims in the audience, um, including the, the widow of Reverend Clemente Pickney, who was the, the leader of Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston. And um, to have her in the audience just gave, the, gave it this incredible potency. Um, I will not soon forget that experience. It, it truly changed. It changed me. I, and I honestly had to pull it together because our show was the last show. So that night we did our show, which was Sam's Room. And Sam's Room was written by Trey Coates Mitchell and Dale Sampson, the book. And then the music was written by Caitlin Marie Bell, Mark Campbell, and Dale Simpson on some of the lyrics. And um, it is about a nonverbal teenager in 1998 who makes a, um, a communication breakthrough via technology and is able to start communicating in a way he's never been able to via typing on a computer. Um, I had the honor of playing Sam alongside uh, Alibi Gori from growing up and um, Natalie Collins, who's a new actress. Uh, she's well, she's back. She's new to the scene, so to speak, because she, she, she was an actress in New York, but she's had kids and now she's coming back. And she was amazing, too. Um, the book is incredible. It, it what it gave me was um, I had it, incredible challenges. I had to portray um, a a young man with with autism who stems and stemming is the sort of hand flapping or or, or like you know touching a face or like it's basically how um, the body receives information and then it needs to release that information um, and that's sort of the experience of people with autism everything is really intense since um, sensorily I'm just gonna let that word slide I think it is one but we'll find out later <clears throat> the, I do I play him as a realistic person um, who he is with the stemming in the in, the, in his nonverbal state, and then the second version of him that I play was his senior in high school. You know, just the kid inside who just who is who he is and is watching all of this and sees his mom struggle to uh, support him and his, through his therapy sessions, his grandfather who he loves, who who you know is a clown, and 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 his the girl he falls in love with. Um, he narrates the show, and then there's a third version of Sam, which is Sammy Starr, and he's the rock star, and he comes alive in the musical numbers, which were fantastic. The music is great. Um, I it was an honor to play that role. It it was I I couldn't shake it. I actually I, I watched Alive Inside at your recommendation, your Fresh Friday a couple weeks ago, and wept like a baby at that movie. I haven't cried like that since since Room probably, or maybe Dear Zachary. Which I watched in college years ago, and there's a there's a scene where where Sam um, where Sally his love interest gives him a cassette tape and he plays it and he he comes alive to that music in a sense, and I really I use that as as such as beautiful source material, and just to know that that all of these different um, underserved under stories untold um, were being told at this festival in Birmingham was incredible. I think the highest compliment I could have ever possibly received was that this one girl came up to me after the show named Caitlin and she said that her brother had nonverbal autism and that she said she wept the whole time and that, that, that we honored her brother and the piece. And that's all I could ever ask for. Um, it was truly the experience of a lifetime. I cannot wait to be involved however I can through the rest of its iteration. It is the beginning. It has to start somewhere. It did start. I think this festival has the potential to be um, one of the greatest I could ever possibly hope to be a part of. And um, I know that you would have appreciated all of it. Um, and with that, I leave you. Um, that's what I've been doing. That's what I did. It's, it's fulfilled me in a way that I cannot even imagine. And I, I know which steps to take now because I know that if I can get closer to whatever that was, then I'm doing what I'm, I'm here to do. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks for listening to that. And uh, yeah, talk to you soon.